what an amazing day to sit down with another badass woman and yes. just hash things out. So good to see you. Oh, you too. This is so yeah. exciting and so fun. Yeah. So I, I think we should like, let everybody know that Carla and I met and if you're not watching this on YouTube and you're just listening, this is Heather. Yeah. <laughs> Carla and I met online. We met via social media. And, you know, social media gets a bad rap. We can spend a lot of time wasting time on it and we can feel a lot of shame and stuff coming from social media, but it's got some beautiful stuff. Like when it brings people together, how amazing is that? Yeah, I, I completely agree because it's how I've met so many amazing, incredible, powerful, strong women and just created these connections through that. And that's that's what I look at with the beauty of social media is the amount of connections that that I've made over this that aren't just acquaintances. We're we're good friends now. And you and I have the the same story of meeting through social media. Yeah. And we 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 knew common people. There was common ground, but it was a, a certain post that I had put on my stories from menopause in the workplace. And wow, did that get a lot of responses. A lot of women saying what happened to them, but it also connected you and I, and we said, we need to get together. Yeah. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because it's also, you know, it, to me, it takes it to also where you and I do a lot of the same things in, in, but we're, we're different, but we do a lot of the same things. We're in different parts of the country, but um, where it's just another example of two of us, two podcasters, two coaches, all the things coming together and cheering each other on, cheering other women on, which I know that you're passionate about that too, and not viewed as competition, but as you know, what a way we can collaborate and pour and speak into women by both of us sharing our, our experiences and our stories. 100% agree. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I do firmly believe too, that when you have more numbers, <laughs> you will make greater impact. So yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So let's, let's dive in with talking about, you know, the, the topic that brought us even together with age in the workplace, menopause in the workplace, what's happening? What's like, what are we hearing? What's experiences that you've had um, or that do you remember, have had? Do you even remember what that post said? Um, I was trying to think about that. I was trying I to remember know. exactly. And, you know, unfortunately stories like come and go. And then I, I, it had something to do with I know women, I put you on the spot. <laughs> women, um, their difficulties. And I can't remember exactly if oh, it was about leaving. It was workplace. about, it was about something about with, um, wasn't it with aging and menopause? I, darn, I wish I would have looked before we got on, but. Total menopause moment. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but the point of it was that we do feel like ageism, sexism, like a lack of understanding, yeah, a lack of education. And the people that were coming out of the woodwork talking to me about what they've experienced, like in all different capacities. So yeah. some women in fitness, some women um, in the business world, the things that they came up against really unfair and yes. very common. Yeah. Well, and I shared with you one of my experiences when I was sending out some resumes, I was in my fifties and a lot of it was in the health world. Um, different areas that I thought this would be really amazing to go into these organizations. And uh, I sent out several and not one response, nothing. And I, I have felt like that on other, other ones that I've done. And I can't say that it's necessarily because of my age, but I know for what I was, I was applying for, I was definitely qualified, if not more than qualified. And, but you could tell from my resume and the experience in the years, you know, I, what my age was, not that I put my birthday, but never, never anything, not a response, not a no thank you, just anything. And I really just had to uh, wonder if it had to do with my age. And I think I told you if, if people would give us a chance and also let us get in front of them and see us mm -hmm. and see the women at this age, how confident and bold and strong, and we know who we are, uh, what a gift women our age would be to these these corporations and companies right right 
And not only that, but a lot of women our age have more to give. They have more time to give. They're right. not, you know, tied up with little kids at home, running around to all different events with kids. They have more experience. Um, you know, even from the perspective of like our, our demeanor with how we've gone through enough things that we are a little more chill <laughs> and confident in how we handle things. Yes. You know, there's, there's this maturity in how we interact with people that's quite different than my 30 year old self in the, mm -hmm. in the workplace. I think, I think you're right. And I think that if you're not given the chance, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a moot point, but one of the things that I think really needs to like, let's talk about how we know this stuff is happening, but how can we make an impact? How, how can we change it? And I think it's really like a multifaceted approach. We need, we need more education. Mm -hmm. We need more, um, you know, implementing environmental things that could help women. Like, looking at, you know, the temperature, you and I have talked a lot about where we live. It's cold in my neck of the woods. It's hot in your neck of the woods. Like we're, we're dealing with different things. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there's just such like a, a need for this new culture and there's companies now that are providing education to businesses, which is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that it takes a long time to unroll all that too. So it's gotta, it's gotta be a ripple effect from as many people as possible. Yeah, which when you talk about that in the education and how companies could implement programs that that talk about aging, that talk about um, helping women through the stages of their life. And that can be by having someone coming in like you and I that talks mm -hmm. and, and guides women through the things to do when yeah. they are at this age. There's so many things that could be done within companies at for exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I heard this uh, statistic and it was that 50%, this was from Midi Health, 50% of women in their 40s are considering leaving the workplace because of symptoms. So we're talking perimenopausal people, right? Yeah. For the most part. So they're having all sorts of symptoms, like not sleeping at night. So they're going to work exhausted. They're having brain fog so they are not feeling confident in their decision making or their speaking and you know and then there's the the other physical things too you know you're all of a sudden soaking wet and then you're cold because you're soaking wet and the air conditioning's on so 50 percent of women in their 40s are considering leaving their jobs and 10 percent actually do and if you ran like big numbers on that that's a staggering amount of women who are leaving when really we could change that we mm -hmm. don't, they don't have to suffer. There's so many things that they can do to not suffer, but I don't yeah. know if women know this. I think they just think I'm losing it. I, I don't feel well. I, I, I can't handle this anymore. And you know, like think of all the things that come with not sleeping well and not feeling well, like, oof. yeah, <laughs> irritability, impatience, uh, brain fog. I mean, all, all the things. And yeah. if, if, if they could have the education and the knowledge and the people that they work with so that they have an understanding for women that are going through this. So they don't feel like they're alone or losing their mind or going crazy, or they don't have to be embarrassed if they're sitting there and all of a sudden they're, they're covered in this sweat because it is mortifying. But mm -hmm. again, that's where the education and everything comes in where you help women know the things they can do to improve that. And you can help those around her know how to help her best. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Carla, I don't think you know this. I have Hashimoto's. So one of the, one of the, you know, fun things I deal with anyway is brain fog. So when I started going through perimenopause on top of the Hashimoto's, like I thought I was losing my mind. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Literally losing my mind. And I would be, um, I'd be working with someone or I'd be teaching a class and I would just it's gone. It's gone, gone, gone. And it's so, Im it's embarrassing. It is. Right? Like you're mm -hmm. humiliated and you really do start to doubt your abilities. <laughs> and so there's that like weird time because it's, we're more confident, but we're also like, what's going on? Why, what happened to me? Where did my brain go? And I remember having a conversation with my mother on the phone saying, mom, I, 
I can't remember anything. I, and, and I'm afraid, like, maybe it's the concussions I had, maybe, you know, she she chalked it up, you know, to, and we're talking, you know, this is the difference too, with when my mom's age went through menopause and they really didn't know anything about it. Yeah. uh, She chalked it up to being a busy mom with three kids and working and, you know, you can, you can pass it off for that. But I think that we know now that these, these symptoms are coming from a root cause and it's coming from the hormone imbalances. So for me, it it was a double whammy, um, to be, you know, at this stage of the game in perimenopause, I was mostly working for myself. I was still working for a few companies, but it makes you really doubt your, your place. It really does. Really does. And it can show up in so many ways. And I think I'd shared with you for mine, the worst part of mine was vertigo. And I don't remember if that was you I told, but I got Uh vertigo because everything was so off whack that it was, uh, it was absolutely awful. And I would fight through it all day long. And by the end of the day, just be exhausted. And I was working outside of the home some too. And Mm -hmm. I would just be exhausted from fighting through it all day long. And uh, again, until I got my hormones and everything in line, that stuck with me until I did. And it was tough. It was tough to work through that. Um, I've had vertigo. I don't even know how you did it. I don't know how you went to work. I laid on a couch like I was on a roller coaster. That was terrible. (laughs) Yes, it is. It is awful. But again... If we can just help women, um, you yeah. know, through through helping them to learn and be educated, women our age and beyond. And I'm 59. I always tell everybody how old I am. I mean, as you I, should. I, yeah, we, as you should. Because you are smoking. <laughs> oh, right back at you. But you know, I mean, I I truly believe that any company would, we would be such a gift to to any company. And I feel that way about the women around our age for all the reasons that you and I just talked about. Yeah. So let's talk about like what women need also besides, you know, the workplace support. Let's talk about community because you and Mm -hmm. I are both big on community, right? Yeah. We were just talking about that. (laughs) Yeah. How important it is. And um, one of the things that women feel a lot at this age, you know, when they're, when they're going through the changes, loneliness Mm -hmm. and, And like when you were dealing with your vertigo, me dealing with my brain fog, I could talk to my mom about it, but I was embarrassed to tell other people about it because it, I just felt like I was not, um, you know, maybe as important or, or had as much to offer people Mm -hmm. when I, when I couldn't remember anything. (laughs) So there's like this feeling of loneliness that comes because you don't know that other people are dealing with those things. Community is everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do, I do feel like more women talk about it a little bit more than they used to. And I, I think it's so important that we do talk, we do share, we do share experiences, the things that are helping us, the things that are not helping us, always remembering that everybody's different. But to have people surrounding you in communities that that can just walk alongside you in this is such a comfort and such a beautiful thing. And, you know, there's so many things, even when I went through postpartum, I felt ashamed of that when I had postpartum after my daughter was born. And it seems like the the same stigma kind of goes with perimenopause and menopause in talking about it and really being open and sharing about it. And we've just, we've got to change that. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, you know, I've, I've had a little bit of a heyday with celebrities pushing supplements lately. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a supporter of every celebrity saying this is going to cure your menopausal symptoms with this gummy. Yeah. yeah. I will come I will commend the celebrities that have come out and made it a little more common speak. You know, at, at least in my circles of what I see, they're opening up more um, you know, more pathways for women to feel comfortable talking about it. I think it's not mm-hmm. quite as taboo. And mm-hmm. you know, there's this there's this phrase right now of menopause is having a moment. I think it's more than a moment. I think it's an awakening. I think we're we're really truly unearthing that these are valuable conversations for mental health Mm -hmm. so that we're we're not feeling like we're anxious alone that we're you know suffering alone or even 
unsure. Like you might be feeling fine, but you're just unsure of these next stages in life because right. they really, they really are stages. I was just talking to someone about it's puberty. <laughs> and then for, for a lot of women, it's pregnancy. And they're just like, we know that we know you go through puberty. We know you go through pregnancy, but we're all going to go through menopause. So why are we not like understanding what's happening and, and sharing that information more? Right. And the fun part was my daughter was going through puberty and I was going through menopause at the same time because I had her late in life. So that was fun. My husband <laughs> and my son both thought they should probably move out. <laughs> That, you know, it's just, it, if we can, if we can make discussing menopause more normal and, yeah. um, you know, put out there to help, to just help others understand where we're at and being in perimenopause or menopause, or we have brain fog or we're sweating or whatever the things are, doesn't make us incompetent, doesn't make us stupid, does it, you know, we, we are still fully competent, smart women. Um, mm -hmm. We're just, we're going through a difficult time of adjusting to our, our hormones. And if everybody could just remember that, and uh, I think we could get so much further down the road. For sure. Yeah. I think you, one of the great things about community, whether your community is five people or you have a couple hundred people in your community, is that those shares, like those gold shares of things that you maybe were too embarrassed to talk about to your doctor or <laughs> things that you didn't want to ask your mom mm -hmm. she went through. Think, just think, or, you know, like just having that group, that network to say, why is my vagina itching so yeah. much? And, <laughs> and, and what do you do? You know, yeah. like, yeah. like, let's, let's totally normal, no, you know, normalize the conversation. And maybe you're just, maybe like you're someone in a community, like, um, you know, an online community. So you and I both have our groups of people that we work with. Right. Maybe you're that person who's like, I am never saying vagina to someone I don't know or talking about it in public, but I'll, I'll watch what's happening in that community. So I can learn from them, you know, the fly on the wall, but they're uh -huh. still, they're still getting what they need from the community because they're, they're maybe not being heard, <laughs> but they're he they're hearing and they're seeing. Right. And it's even the time to come together with community and other women and laugh at yourselves. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's okay. You know, just laugh at yourselves and you have someone else to do that with and the support from that. And even just being able to laugh through some of it, like sharing a story when you're in your community or whatever and sharing, oh my gosh, I was doing this today. And literally I had to grab a paper towel roll and wipe myself down, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm only saying that because I might've done that before, you know, <laughs> but it's just having that community. Uh, and especially during this stage, just having that community around you will make all the difference in the world as you, as you go through this, you know? Oh gosh, so important. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And I, I also will back that up with, I don't know about you, but I can tell my husband all these things. It's not going to get the same. It, it's not going to give me what exactly I need that I would get from my girlfriends going through it. Right. Right. That That's so true. So true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, they, and nor does he want to hear it. I don't yeah. <laughs> no, he probably doesn't want you saying vagina. <laughs> I mean, now we've said that, what, three, four times? I don't know. Um. That's going to be the new title of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So like when we, when we talk about community and we talk about the changes, we've got to talk about like evolving and, mm -hmm. and how our lives, you know, like how, how we need to set the expectations of things are changing. Things are going to change. They've always changed. Like when we're young, the things we need to know so that when we evolve, <laughs> It's not so hard. It's not this big slap in the face. We're paving the way, I think, for our daughters, for our granddaughters. We are we're opening up these communication lines to help them with with their journeys. I think. Right. I, I totally agree. And you know, because we're so focused, twenties, thirties, sport. I mean, for me, forties because I had kids late. We're so focused on 
raising our kids and not taking care of ourselves and 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 things like that. And then once you start evolving into this this age and this stage of your life, you've kind of lost yourself in that lost taking care of yourself. And if we can also make the importance of of starting to do that at a younger age, starting to take care of yourself at a younger age, even while you're you're raising children and in a corporate job, whatever it is, um, just just helping with making that transition, because I think you can go into perimenopause if if you are if you're doing the healthy eating and exercise and and mindset work and things ease into that perimenopause perimenopause phase you know with a little bit smoother transition and yeah. if it, and i think that's where like you said i mean if if we can help lead by example change the narrative around all this talk about it more and educate more it, it it doesn't have to be so difficult as they walk into these different stages of life. And, and walk in confident that they know right. that they're going to be okay and they know what to do. Yes. Completely agree. Yeah. I think, um, you know, that, that the thought of losing ourselves, like you, you just touched on, it happens. I don't know anyone that it hasn't happened to. So whether it's, around childbirth or, you know, um, changing jobs or leaving a job, whatever it is, I feel like we do in our forties and fifties and onward have this pinnacle where we feel like, oh, I just lost myself. But, but maybe it's not that we're really losing ourselves. Maybe that's the, the, um, you know, the butterfly moment to yeah. reinvent, reinvent yourself, re like, Put put on the cape and and go at it. Like this is this is an opportunity now to take all the collective of what we have, and try something new. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you and I were talking about a, a conversation with kids, and um, when kids don't do what you want them to do, or <laughs> when kids start to want to do their own things, and all of a sudden, like your role as a parent it's this pivotal part where you're like, oh, I'm not super involved with them anymore. Instead of looking at that as a sad thing of, you know, like mourning that, that relationship has changed. Like, let that be the time when you go find your joy. Mm -hmm. This is a great time. I think the second half of our lives is the perfect time to, yeah. you know, go find what makes you happy and, and gives you peace and makes you feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I, I agree a hundred percent. And the thing you know, for me, I know you and I've talked and I've shared my fifties are when I've done more than I have done. I, I tell my kids, I still don't know what I'm doing with life because I'm always trying new things. I'm, I love learning. I love, I love just trying new things. And I'm at a stage in my life where I can do more things now because before it was more family kid focused. And now it it can be more on me and the things that I'm doing. And it just opens up so many, so many more doors. And, you know, I'm an empty nester and my daughter comes back from college, but I'm an empty nester. So this season for me, like you said, it, it's been amazing. And I, I take better care of myself as far as my health and my stress and my mindset and I, just all the way, all around, I I feel so much better than I did in my 40s. You know, I don't know if I can remember all the way back to 30s how I felt because I think I was just running around a lot. But <laughs> um, and that's why I always make the statement about we're not just because you're getting older, throw away the mindset that we're washed up, that the that the world, I think, is kind of created around women that get past a certain age and that we don't matter anymore. And it, it's so important to help all of us to come together and change that narrative that this can be the most beautiful time of your life. It's different from when you were raising kids or whatever, uh, because to me, that's my biggest, greatest accomplishment and most mm -hmm. amazing thing but this stage of my life has been absolutely fabulous and empty nesting and having my husband and our time it it's yeah. it's been amazing and I want women to get excited about this phase of their life and not so dread true. it you know I yeah I I'm I'm looking forward to it 
Um, I mean, there is, there's, I still have one foot in the, um, you know, I've got kids at home still, but, um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And I'm also really, uh, firm that you need to have goals and you've got to have, you just got to keep putting a carrot out there. There's mm -hmm. something else. There's something else that you're either going to be part of a, a charity that you're working for, or you like, it's a physical goal or, you know, an adventure that you're training for. Like a I love that. I'm so excited to hit that base, but I do those things now. I feel because my kids are old enough that I can yeah. go off and, and run the Grand Canyon rim to rim, which I'm doing next month. So excited. About that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. But you got it. You got to have the things, right? Like you've got something coming up in your community that I think is super cool. Your, your 5k. Yes. Just having, having yeah. things yeah. to look uh, forward to. I think it's it's challenging yourself, which is what helps me when I'm I'm doing something that's out of my com comfort zone, that's uncomfortable. And my next thing in September is I'm doing a, a rock walk with my one of my groups. But the big thing is my 21 mile paddleboard event, which is a charity event, and hey. fully out of my hey. comfort zone. I have paddleboarded maybe a handful of times prior to this, but I, I 21 have, miles that 21 is 21 miles yeah that is and, something <laughs> and I, I know it's going to be hard I know it's going to be a challenging day but I also know I can get through it and I can do it because I do keep challenging myself and uh you know I may come in <laughs> I may come in with every part of my body sore but it's still, it's fun, like you doing yours, to challenge yourself and just uh -huh. grow yourself and keep having fun. I mean, this is something I wouldn't normally have done. And I love that it's for a, a, a cause too. But yeah. to, to keep having fun, don't stop having fun in life. And put yourself out there. And going back to like empty nesting combined with community, if you don't have those people already who are pushing you to do the the hard things, the adventurous things, the things that set your heart on fire, go find them. They're out there. Yes. And I think, you know, like I, I, I look at women who are a little bit older and maybe they're a little more, um, you know, stuck with, with smaller groups of support and they don't really know how to find those communities. Mm -hmm. We have so much access to things, you know, online. I sat uh, next to a woman on a flight home from Texas last year. And she, she just like, I can't stop thinking about her. She lost her husband. Her son was paralyzed in an accident and she was a lawyer and she just, she hit despair, but she went online and she found, um, a group, I think she called it, called it warrior women. I think that's what it was called. And they traveled to Costa Rica together. They traveled to uh, maybe Bali, like and fed elephants, like find your people. Yes, right. Do and the things. And I would add to that, don't wait for them to come to you because I yeah. think that's a lot of times what we do or we, we go back to some circles, maybe that didn't quite work for us. And just like when I started my monthly women's group in my home, I went through all the things of, oh my gosh, I'm, I'll have to have my house clean off, do this, have to do that. And it's just like, do it, do it without perfection, just do it. And I started this group. It's been, it'll be two years in January. And it's a simple, it's a sweet way to gather women. I gather them in my home. It's nothing fancy. Everyone brings food. And it's just created this community. And there's so many different ways. Find through your neighborhoods. Um, if you like to walk, walking groups or gardening groups, or there's so many ways to find community. And or start your own. Right. Which is why I started the, you know, the monthly women's, because I'm like, well, why not me? Why, yeah. why not me? And why am I waiting for someone else to start a group? And exactly. it's been one of the greatest things that I've done. And um, I absolutely love it. I love all the groups that I belong to. And it just brings such different types of friendships into your life. And it, it's just beautiful. Just like reaching out to people on social media and people that I, I've done podcasts with, probably the same for you, where now I've become friends and we stay in touch. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I think that we, 
you and I look at this stage of life more optimistically. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, my hope is that every woman realizes that she can feel strong and like she belongs, whether it's in the workplace or it's not in the workplace, that this is the time really to thrive and shine. And I think, I think you are of the same mind. Yes. Yes, definitely. And I would love to touch on that a little bit as far as um, before we wrap up on beauty and, and aging. And I was sharing with Heather, a podcast I listened to years ago, and it has stuck with me all these years. And I've gone back and listened to it and the reminders, and I'm, I'm going to read a little bit of what it is because I don't want to botch up um, what it said, but it talked about how beauty has always defined you. And several years ago, probably four years ago, I actually did a post on another page on this and really talked about how that's what defined me growing up. Uh, it was just focused on that. But it talks about if beauty is what always defines you, what happens when you no longer look a certain way? And that's where you put all your identity, all your worth and all your value. And beauty, as you may know, it is changing, but it's still beauty even as you age, because a strong, confident, active woman is absolutely beautiful because she shines from the inside out with joy. And she has, she has from feeling amazing as she ages. She accepts the aging process because she's fighting back with a healthy, active lifestyle, not worrying about the wrinkles she earned from laughing and living life. And I just love that. I think it's so powerful. And I think it's something that we can all carry with us. And again, like we talked about, just help in being the example to this younger generation, to, to the women our age now, that you don't have to stop living, that it's never too late and you're never too old, right? And Amen. Um, I don't, that, to me, that was so powerful. And um, just if we focus on our beauty from within, we can, we can do anything. Words of wisdom, Carla. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> oh, I'm so absolutely. glad we had this chat. <laughs> I, I know, right? Yeah. Can we do this often? We can. It's almost like a little therapy counseling session, <laughs> <laughs> except we're doing it for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll we'll carry on, and we will continue to take this message out into the world. Thanks so much for for sharing uh, this time this, with me today. This has been so fun, and we will. Um, uh, I will have Heather's contact info and all her stuff in my show notes and same same um, yeah so we are so glad that everyone joined us this has just been so much fun and I'm sure we will find another topic sometime soon that we'll have to do this again awesome okay all right see ya <laughs>